A very good afternoon to all of you. A warm welcome from AIG Hospitals. Uh, today we will be uh, having the 10th edition of our interventional uh, clinics, uh, which is a monthly affair. Uh, as always, I think we will begin by uh, thanking uh, all the people who have logged in and all the ones uh, who will actually listen to the recording. Uh, we are happy to share that uh, more than 1000 uh, interventional cardiologists and budding cardiologists have been attending this session and uh, their positive feedback has actually encouraged us significantly. Uh, as you are aware, uh, last time we had discussed about uh, chronic total occlusions, we discussed about the anti-grade approach and also the dissection re-entry. And uh, continuing on that, uh, today we will have the second part of uh, the CTO clinic and uh, today we will be discussing about the retrograde approach. Uh, as always, uh, we have a guest faculty and uh, we are really honored to have an international faculty uh, from Japan. Uh, I'll uh, hand over to Dr. Anuj, my colleague, uh, to give a brief introduction of our guest faculty and then take the program forward. Over to you, Anuj. Thanks, Rajiv. Uh, we are very uh, glad to actually welcome Mr. Takuma Suda, who is a senior interventional uh, cardiologist uh, from uh, Nagoya Ikishakai Hospital. He has been uh, with the hospital for the last, I think, uh, seven or eight years and is well versed with uh, all forms of uh, coronary uh, interventions, peripheral interventions. Mm -hmm. And he has a special interest in uh, uh, chronic total occlusions, has multiple publications all across the world. And uh, we are actually extremely honored to have him uh, in this uh, webinar with us. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Sudha. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Professor. Uh, I will show you my slide. Can you see my... I hope I pronounced, right? I hope I pronounced your name uh, right. I'm from the uh, Nagoya University and Nagoya Exeka Hospital. The, I'm in Takumatsuda. Can you see my slide? Yeah, we can see your slide, sir. Okay. The, do you know the Nagoya uh, in the Japan? The Nagoya is the red one. The shape is uh, like uh, uh, Japan has uh, this shape. So the uh, Nagoya has a uh, uh, center position of the uh, Japan. So our hospital is shown here, and uh, Nagoya has a very beautiful castle, Nagoya Castle. It's uh, built in the uh, 17th century. It's uh, maybe the Four four hundred years ago. So and uh, in the back, uh, now tall building is uh, also the one picture. So uh, I have to the, say about the uh, retrograde approach. The, we divide the uh, category or the steps uh, five steps uh, to the retrograde approach. So the first is the assessing collateral channel and uh, guide by crossing, microcaster passing, making connection. Now after that, uh, externalize is uh, adjunctive option for the uh, approach of the retrograde. So the retrograde uh, purpose, purpose of the retrograde approach is uh, crossing the guide wire, anti-gradery or retrogradery, which one is okay. So First steps, the assessing collateral channel is the uh, first steps. Uh, there are some uh, types of collateral channel. The left one is the septal, uh, the next is epicardial, the, this is the circumflex, and uh, this is a uh, SVG open bypass, and uh, finally the occluded bypass graft. So, generally speaking, the, except for the uh, bypass graft, the septal has uh, less tortuosity and uh, less difficulty to wiring and less risk for the uh, perforation and less risk for the tamponade compared to the epicardial channel. It's uh, because of the, uh, mainly because of the tortuosity. So epicardial channel has a uh, uh, highly tortuosity compared to the septal channel. Um, the, the, the septal channel is uh, possible to be a dilation uh, by the balloon uh, 
So if the channel is too small to pass the microcaster, so the balloon, ballooning is okay. If the small balloon is applied, so bigger balloon is not. So the recently the some uh, prediction is uh, could be made uh, before the uh, CTO PCR for the collateral channel passing. So. This paper showed that the uh, large size collateral channel and the lack of the tochasty is a uh, two predictor of the independent predictor of the uh, passing guide wire for the uh, collateral channel. So, but uh, this also also uh, mentioned about the angle of the attack less than the 45 degree like this. So, and the legs, length of the emerging point uh, is longer. It's also uh, important to the uh, retrograde approach. However, that uh, large collateral was uh, defined as one point. The non to no total chastity uh, as defined as two point. Then the new uh, collateral channel score was uh, calculated, so that the new collateral channel score uh, is has a good uh, correlation with the uh, success rate of the uh, uh, collateral channel tracking with the guide wire. So in Japan, the, this is our uh, paper from Japan. So J channel score was also uh, published uh, in the Euro intervention in the 2020. So it's a little bit different from the uh, FANG score from the Korea. So the collateral size is the similar. And uh, BCD is, uh, is uh, quite different from the uh, Korean one. So reverse bend, uh, continuous bend, uh, corkscrew bend is also the uh, factor for difficulty to pass in the uh, collateral channel. So Estimated uh, more than three point as a difficult in this uh, J channel score. And uh, in the difficult so situation, so the guide wire crossing success rate was less than 30% uh, in the SEPTA channel and in not SEPTA channel like this. So, the this is the our case already uh, succeeded the uh, RCA CTO and the uh, circumflex CTO and the RC CTO. So and uh, left one is uh, estimated as uh, easy in the young score, but uh, in the moderate in the J channel score. And the Epicardia one was estimated as uh, both difficult in the both scoring system. And open bypass is also the uh, easy in the both scoring system like this. It means the high uh, success rate of the passing uh, the channel. So the channel secretion is uh, very, very important to uh, perform the CTO PCI because of the uh, reducing the procedure time or the uh, reducing the uh, complication. So, so after that, the uh, uh, guide wire crossing is uh, next next step. So, generally speaking, the uh, epicardial channel is a uh, very high risk compared to the septal channel. So the septal has uh, some tricky channel, but uh, if the perforation, uh, but uh, no tamponade because of the it's a septal, just a septal. So it's a very safe. All, however, the guideway section was to be the very, uh, how can I say, the uh, to be considered best performance. So the SU03 is uh, my first choice for the Scepter and the Epicard channel. Uh, it's a very soft wire. Uh, it's uh, only, it has only 03 ground guide wire. So, then the channel has some uh, branch 
and uh, we have to uh, when I have to select another route. So the I will change to the guideway to Sion because the Sion has a uh, composite core uh, in the uh, central core. So which enable to the uh, make a better uh, torque response so that the Sion has a very controllable guide wire compared to the SU03. But the SU03 is a very safe. And after that, if if the Sion was failed, the uh, hydrophic coating guide wire, uh, like a Sion Black or XTR, is a uh, next choice. But the uh, XTR is, uh, has a very a small uh, entry profile, tapered guide wire, so that uh, compared to the Sion Black, the XTR is suitable for the uh, very tiny uh, channel. But the perforation risk is uh, high compared to the Sion Black. So, the photoceptor, the, this has uh, the, some branch, tiny branch inside the scepter. So I chose the Sion right away. And in the epicardia, the there's high uh, perforation risk and the high bend. So I have to choose the so at first guide wire. The open bypass graft is, well, any guide wire is okay, maybe. And, uh, but uh, occluded bypass graft, uh, the guide wire have to receive the, some, uh, some resistance and uh, some friction from the uh, inside the bypass because of the uh, ma material of the uh, inside the occluded bypass. So the lubricity is uh, needed. So uh, Schoenbrock is uh, considered to be the first guide wire for the occluded bypass. And uh, next, uh, after the guide wire passing, the microcast passing is needed. So the, there's uh, some uh, some good microcaster in Japan. So Carvel Corsair, Corsair XS, Pycronos GT, and Jizai. So recently, the thermal launch of the Jizai is a uh, it's a very a small one compared to the Pycronos GT, but uh, uh, it's a very tolerable one compared to the uh, there's a prominent PTA or something so that. So, but anyway, the, uh, my first choice of the retrograde approach is the carver for the microcaster. So after that, uh, if the uh, carver was not past the quarter channel, then I have to consider the, what is the problem in the, uh, for the not passing the carver. So rotation is necessary or the, the profile is smaller is better. So pushability is needed. So I have to consider from the, my feeling from the hand. And uh, so if the rotatable one is uh, next steps or preferable, the Corsair or Corsair Access is the next choice of the guy, microcaster. But the Corsair XS has a low profile compared to the uh, Corsair. So that uh, Corsair XS is, is uh, very suitable for the uh, very tiny microcast, micro channel. And in the fine cross GT, the pushability is needed. That I will, ch I will change the fine cross GT. And uh, if the channel is very tortuous and uh, very tiny, so I have to, I will choose the Jizai for the microcaster. So the previous case, I chose the uh, Corsair for Chesceptor because the uh, uh, channel is very big and Epicard for the, uh, oh, sorry, the Carver for the Epicard because the uh, channel is so bended and, and the open bypass is for the Pine cross because uh, this CTO is very long, RC CTO. 
so the I I I consider that the pushability is so important to pass in the inside the studio. So I I chose the fine cross city. And the finally, the occluded bypass graft, I chose the course access. So, and the, the next step is a connection. Making connection is the next step. So, nowadays that uh, we have we have uh, four strategy for the retroid approach. So, reverse cut technique, cut technique, and the retroid wire uh, direct crossing and the uh, kitchen wire technique. So, and the uh, reverse cut has uh, some uh, some types of the reverse cut, conventional, directed, extended, or uh, device-assisted reverse cut. So, this is a uh, recently published data. The Japan has a, a high rate of the reverse cut technique. Uh, compared to the Europe and USA in the 2013s. Uh, so, and uh, the retroid wire crossing rate is uh, very less compared to the other country. And the kissing wire is relatively high. Maybe the, this is, uh, maybe the Gaia is the one for the, uh, this region. It means the anti grade wire is uh, very easy to the negotiate in the in Japan. So reverse card has a um, the three techniques: the conventional, directed, extended. So inside the CTO, the conventional directed; outside the CTO, extended. So conventional. Uh, reverse cut has uh, needed a large size of the balloon inside the city to connect on the uh, retrograde wire. And uh, directed reverse cut uh, need only the small size balloon. So extended reverse cut has needs a large balloon. It's uh, because of the, in, it's not inside the city. So it, it's for the creating the subintimal uh, and the dissection to create dissection to come catch up retrograde to the uh, anti-grade true room. So, it was cut the there's four types of the uh, guide wire anti-grade sub intima or intra plug retrograde uh, wire intra plug or sub intima. So, pattern one is a uh, both sub intimal space. So in this pattern, the, it's a very quite simple situation because uh, uh, ballooning uh, make the sub intimal very large. So retrograde and uh, anti-grade guide wire uh, meet inside the uh, sub intimal space very easy. And next steps, next pattern uh, is uh, both uh, intra -proc. So this is also the simple situation, but in some case, the uh, if, uh, if the CTO has uh, some tough CTO, uh, tough classification, so it's I felt uh, some difficulty to create a connection because of the uh, classification. So the pattern three is also sometimes complication, complicated situation, but uh, uh, if the balloon was uh, changed to the bigger one, the, we can create uh, some connection from, some connection with the retrograde guide wire. This is a anti-grade in, intima plug and retrograde has some intima space. So finally, the pattern for is most difficult uh, situation. The retrograde uh, true room, anti-grade uh, intimal, uh, anti-grade sub-intimal. So in this kind of situation, so if the uh, inside the CTO, ballooning, uh, if the ballooning was performed, but the uh, dissection was only created inside the uh, sub-intimal, not to the uh, 
intro block. So in this case, so this some case needs a extended reverse cut is a uh, technique is the need in this kind of situation. Or the, uh, if the uh, retrograde guide wire is inside the intro plug, the direct retrograde crossing is the next option in this kind of situation. After that, uh, the externalize is the final option for the uh, retrograde approach. But uh, after, if after the uh, passing the retrograde wire to the CTO, it sounds uh, difficult to catch the, or introduce the anti-grade guiding caster. So in some kind of situation, so in Japan, uh, there are some snare, but uh, in foreign country, the, there's no snare. So, if in um, so in this case, so I perform the high hand base snare. Can see that movie. So the guide wire was bended like this inside the uh, guiding cast and the inflate balloon, and the guide wire was bended. So the guide wire tips of the guide wire was locked with the baru and uh, if the guide wire was pushed so loop was created and the little guide wire was insert inside the loop and guide wire was retrieved and the catch like this so the hand base snare is one option one the guide extension reverse cut is the next option for the, uh, this kind of situation. <clears throat> so the, I'll show you the educational the CTO case. So very, this is a very tough CTO. The patient was 55 years old male with RCA CTO. Uh, prior intervention was performed into the uh, already due to the ACS. So CT showed that uh, very long CTO from the uh, proximal RC to distal PD. The total CTO length is over the uh, 100 millimeter. I show you that. Uh, angiography this case so this has a very matured retrograde channel from the scepter like this so at first the, i chose the scepter channel with a very soft guide wire so to pass the scepter channel then the left one is a chip injection. You can see that uh, this angle. So I mean that the uh, angle is too, not the uh, fracture from the PD like this. So it's a uh, very difficult to negotiate from the receptor channel right away with the intermediate guide wire. So the first, the Corsair plus UV3 couldn't pass it well. So Sasuke, uh, it's uh, launched in the, available in the Japan. It's a double room caster, like a crusade. And uh, also work. So that the, uh, can see that the, this one, the, this is uh, the uh, screen button technique. So the guide wire wraps to the PL, OPL, like this. So prevent to the prolapse, the uh, ballooning was performed, not to prolapse the PL, like this. But however, the uh, 
uh, with a balance screen technique, the intermediate guide wire uh, never uh, work from the lateral grid. It's a shame of the, this case. So, all the plus UV3 collapse. The Sasuke plus intermediate guide wire also grabs. So, the not to perhaps the PL, the balance screen technique was performed. It means the uh, two guide wire uh, was inserted from the one sector channel. And one sector has the past uh, one is for the balloon and one is for the uh, Corsair. Both, is, both system is uh, crossing in the, the same sector. But however, the, uh, this, this technique is also failed in this situation. So I changed uh, the, another channel for the PL. So you can see the very bended AC channel like this. I select this one. So, Fortunately, the saw all passed to the uh, 4 pl like this. But unfortunately, the uh, guide wire only go to the distal 4 pl because of the uh, highly angulated uh, to the PD. So never come come back to the PD. So I perform the burn screen technique from the 4 pd system. So by the uh, screen technique, the guide wire never pull up to the pier and back to the PD like this. After that, anchoring the balloon technique was performed to trap the chip of the guide wire and pass the microcaster and trapping the microcaster body to reinforce the back, 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 back up for the microcast and uh, retrograde guide wire was in to the uh, CPO retrograde with the same guide wire but it's, it's an intermediate guide wire. So this is a shame of the, uh, this case. So carbon was only to the distal PD and to the distal PL. So uh, from the sector channel, uh, another system was uh, inserted from the sector channel. And the uh, balloon was performed, not to pull up the uh, PL and come back to the PD. And after that, the trapping the uh, body of the microcaster to reinforce the backup, cap backup power, and the uh, little red guide wire was inserted. After that, the uh, anti red and the red red knockaway technique was performed. And the uh, guide extension, this is a guide extension, tip of the guide extension, guide extension it was cut, was succeed. Okay. However, however, very complicated situation was happened. So, and see the IBUS image. And uh, slowly, I, I will explain the this IBUS. So, this is a externalized guide wire. Uh, this guy, uh, sorry, this IBUS was uh, uh, on the externalized guide wire from the uh, AC channel. So, this is a uh, PD, PL bifurcation. Then this is a uh, externalized guide wire. And uh, this is a uh, OPD guide wire. It means that this is a bifurcation for, of the RCA distal. 
CTOD study exit. So, but the uh, uh, externalized guide wire uh, located into the sub intima. It's a, this is a true loop. So this is a sub intima space. So it means a little bit of guide wire was shortcut to the OPDPL bifurcation. Moreover, and uh, this is a pullback. So it's a mid, mid side or uh, inside the CTO. And uh, it's okay. It's maybe sub intima. And more proximal. Very huge hematoma was occurred. It's an inside CTO. Maybe the middle side of the CTO. So, and moreover, so very huge hematoma was observed, and the true lumen was very compressed with a hematoma. And you uh, can see that uh, this, this slide, so pencil was around uh, 2 o'clock. So guide wire located in, in, inside the, uh, sorry, outside the vessel. So far from the vessel structure. And after that, this is a uh, sub intima. This is a true. But this is a inside us, uh, this. Okay, can see. This is a very confusing, but very important I was guide, I was uh, findings. So this is a true. This guide wire is also already populated. So shame of this case. So externalized guide wire, it's okay. Guy externalize is okay, but uh, position isn't bad because digital PD was uh, shortcut like this. True lumen, if the little red was uh, inside the intra plug, it's okay because uh, preserved. Uh, it, it, uh, the, after the stenting, the, we can preserve the 4PD. But uh, in, in case, in this case, the 4PDPL bifurcation was shortcut retrogradely. So if the stent was implanted, uh, lose the risk of the high risk of the losing the 4PD. Moreover, the mid CTO, the best structure is far from the uh, uh, guide wire. So this is outside. So population risk is very high. So what do you manage it? So it's very confusing the uh, situation. But uh, I performed the integrated, I was guided retrograde wiring in this situation. Can see that the uh, integrated IBUS caster and retrograde guide wire. Can see? So I mean that uh, another guide wire was externalized from the uh, 4PD with a septal channel. So the integrated IBUS was located and the retrograde another septal channel was selected with a, uh, uh, it's okay. And with a ballooning was performed to prevent a cardiac tamponade, an integrated guiding caster. So, integrated guide I was, was uh, a little bit pullback, so retrograde guide wire was uh, make progress. So, Finally, the second guide wire was externalized, almost inside the plug. So this is a, a IBUS from the second externalized. 
so can you say the next guide wire is uh, this one okay so this structure was observed into the uh, 12 o'clock and the guide wire was also uh, observed inside the base structure inside crack and uh, at here uh, the bit structure was uh, around here and inside the plug guide wire was located into the inside plug the more prox proximal side so the guide wire is kept inside the intro plug so after that uh, ballooning and stent was implanted to the uh, RC. So final angiography was showed action. So the PD was preserved and the perforation was not observed. So the stent could be lead to the hemostat and the preserved body. So the key lecture of this case is this one. The importance of retrograde channel selection. So PD is has a not good for entry to the CTO because the less coaxability. So AC approach is better uh, to guide wiring retrogradely because of the uh, good coaxiality. And uh, the balance screen and anchoring, trapping technique is also uh, useful in this kind of situation, like this. And uh, for the uh, externalize, the guide extension guided reverse cut is useful. And finally, the I was guided retrograde wiring is an attractive technique uh, for management uh, this uh, disaster uh, phenomena. So, if the integrated guide or integrated uh, rewiring was tried, the very large space was already created. So, the very difficult to uh, rewiring integrated, but uh, retrograde. This RCA has a less space, which means a uh, uh, very good controllability of the guide wire from retrograde. So it's very important to uh, manage this kind of uh, complication. So uh, we have to know many tips for CWPCI. Thank you. It's over. Wonderful talk and uh, especially for uh, beginners to understand which wire to use, which microcatheter to use, uh, when to use for, uh, what to use for which collateral. Uh, extremely uh, wonderfully uh, projected and uh, thank you so much. I think uh, we'll take questions at the end of the session. Uh, we'll request uh, Dr. Swaroop to uh, give the next talk and then we'll come back to the question and answer sessions. Thank you, Dr. Suda, for that excellent uh, lecture. And then we'll discuss another in a course of next 10 minutes approach to a CTO PCI. So, in the course of these two webinars, so far we discussed what are the principles of uh, CTO PCI. And then we discuss the integrated uh, wire escalation. Then uh, we discuss integrated uh, subintimal uh, dissection and the re-entry. Uh, and then uh, just now we finished the step by step approach for the retrograde PCI. So my job is to kind of summarize the approach to CTO PCI in another 10 minutes. So the global expert consensus uh, 
and then seven widely adopted principles of CTO PCI uh, led by Dr. Bilakis. Uh, the principal indication for CTO PCI is to improve the symptoms. Second principle is uh, dual an uh, coronary angiography and thorough structured angiographic review should be performed in every case. Use of microcatheter is essential for the guide wire support. There are four CTO crossing uh, strategies. Uh, just now we discussed that anti-grade wire escalation, anti-grade dissection and re-entry, retrograde wire escalation and retrograde dissection and re-entry. The change of equipment technique increases the likelihood of success and improves the efficacy of the procedure. Centers and physicians performing CTO PCI should have a necessary equipment, expertise and experience to optimize the success and minimize and manage complications. Every effort should be made to optimize the stent deployment in CTO PCI, including the frequent use of intravascular imaging. So, the commonest and easily reproducible and widely adapted score is a JCTO score uh, developed by the uh, Japanese uh, CTO experts and it is highly reproducible and easy to understand. So, at least one bend more than 45 degrees in the course of CTO, the one point is given. Calcification in the course of CTO, length of the CTO more than 20 millimeter, blunt proximal cap and the previous failed attempt. So, as the JCTO score increases, the uh, success of the CTO PCI comes down and you have to adopt more and more complex strategies and for this uh, you have to have necessary equipments and expertise. So, typically JCTO 0, 1, uh, uh, the integrated wire escalation is likely to succeed. Uh, typically, uh, JCTO 1 and the uh, in-segment uh, occlusive, uh, instant occlusive CTOs, they are easily uh, 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 managed with the integrated wire escalation. But as the JCTO score increases, you have to adopt more complex strategies like uh, integrated dissection re-entry or the retrograde approach. So, analyze your CTO lesion well. The first thing comes is the proximal cap because this is a starting point. So, ana analyze your proximal cap well. Uh, any ambiguity of the proximal cap is likely to be associated with the complication, especially wire induced perforation. If you do not, uh, if you have a proximal catch which is uh, proximal cap which is ambiguous and you start with the integrated approach. So, if necessary, you can take a dual injection and other views, other contralateral views or you can do a selective microcatheter injection or you can have a co-registration with the CT NGO and analyze your proximal cap well. If the proximal cap is ambiguous with multiple modalities and projection, then probably your anti-grade approach is less likely to succeed and you will have more complications with your anti-grade wire escalation or anti-grade approach mainly wire induced perforations. Then second thing which is important to understand is what is the length and the composition and the course of the CTO. So, any length more than 20 millimeter, again your integrated wire escalation is likely to fail and you should have additional modalities uh, like integrated dissection re-entry either with the knuckle wire or the uh, with the dedicated uh, device like cross box string ray system. Calcified CTO, again the success rate comes down and then uh, you analyze what is the distal vessel, which is distal vessel size more than 2 millimeter are there any important side branches or the distal vessel is diffusely diseased. If the distal vessel is diffusely diseased, then again the re-entering into the distal vessel with anti-grade uh, uh, dissection and re-entry can be difficult uh, if not impossible and uh, impo if the important side branch is there at the uh, beyond uh, at the distal vessel, then you may lose that side branch with anti-grade dissection and re-entry and you, it should not be attempted. So, understanding of the distal vessel is also equally important and then understand your collateral channels. I will not go into details because just now it has been discussed thoroughly, but mainly you will have three types of collateral channels either septal or the epicardial or the bypass grafts and then uh, septals are preferred especially for the beginners. So, understand all these four things well, proximal cap, length of the CTO, course of the CTO, composition of the CTO, distal vessel and collaterals and then form a approach. So, uh, this led to a hybrid approach. So, first thing perform a dual catheter angiography. So, uh, try to answer these three questions whether the proximal case is ambiguous, is a poor distal target and is there an interventional collateral. If it is yes straight away uh, you should start with the retrograde approach. If it is no then start with the integrated approach. Then analyze the length of the CTO. If it is less than 20, meter, uh, 20 millimeter then your 
wire escalation strategy, anti-grade wire escalation strategy is likely to succeed. If it is more than 20, not that it is impossible with wire escalation, but you should be ready for the another strategy like dissection and the re-entry either with the knuckle wire or the, with the dedicated device like cross boss or stingray. If uh, you start with the retrograde, then you will have two strategies, either anti-grade wire escalation, if this fails, because it will be successful only in 20 to 30 percent of the cases, then you will have a reverse card technique, which is discussed uh, in detail just now. So, this is called as hybrid approach and if you are, you have expertise and you follow this approach, then the success rate can go as high up to 87 percent. So, just in brief schematic diagrams to understand four strategies of CTO. So, direct this is anti grade, you cross the CTO anti gradely directly, that is anti grade wire crossing or anti grade wire escalation. Then uh, you are outside the uh, CTO, that means sub intimal. So, that is anti grade dissection and the re entry either with the knuckle wire or with the cross boss stingray system. Again, if you come with the retrograde approach, it is like either retrograde wire escalation or, the, or retrograde. Uh, reverse card that is you dilate over the anti grade balloon and then you that facilitates the entry of the retrograde wire then you externalize it and the perform the CTO PCI. So, uh, uh, these are the four stages or the learning curve of the CTO PCI. So, stage one is anti grade wire escalation and this is anti grade and the success rate will be around 50 percent of the CTOs you will be able to do with anti grade wire escalation only. Then as the uh, JCTO score increases and the CTO becomes more complex, then you have to adopt these complex strategies like more complex wires like integrated wire escalation, Gaia 3 series or Confianza and other dedicated wires or integrated dissection and the re-entry. Then you become uh, more experienced and then initially uh, adopt a scepter collaterals or the bypass grafts. Uh, and then the stage 4, this, has, this is reserved for the experts who have wide experience bo for both anti grade and the retrograde approach. Uh, then only you should adopt the uh, epicardial collateral, it should be a last resort. So, these are the 4 stages of learning uh, CTO PCI and more and more JCTO uh, complex, uh, J, uh, uh, J, higher JCTO scores complex CTO PCI, you, are, you will uh, need to adopt the complex strategies. So, if you have uh, only uh, anti grade injection, uh, then you cannot analyze the CTO well and you will overestimate the length of the CTO and uh, there will be a lot of ambiguity. But for the same CTO, if you perform a dual injection, I first the donor vessel and then the anti grade injection, now you understand that it is a very short segment CTO and you can see the uh, nipple there and it is not a blunt occlusion. So, with this injection safely you can say that your anti grade wire uh, escalation like uh, strategy is likely to be succeeded and this is the final result uh, which we could perform with the uh, Gaia wire, Gaia 1 and it is a very short segment CTO. And the, this case uh, if you see the anti grade injection, it is a very complex CTO, diffusely diseased, poor distal target. So, your anti grade like uh, approach is likely to fail, and this case, uh, with the help of Japanese proctor, uh, we could finish uh, with the retrograde approach, uh, re reverse cart, and then uh, and there is a good result at the end of the procedure. And this study, though there is a diffusely diseased uh, PD and PLV, these vessels grow over the period of time, we all know that. So, to conclude by hybrid approach, uh, success rate can be 87 by the experienced operators. There is an acceptable maze rate of around 3 percent, though it is more than the non-CTO PCI, the 3 percent maze rate is acceptable for the complex CTOs. Uh, the integrated wire escalation is the most commonly performed strategy. As the JCTO score increases, the success rate of integrated wire escalation comes down. More complex CTOs, high JCTO score, either anti grade dissection and re entry or the retrograde approach is likely to be successful. Still, the inability to cross with the guide wire is the commonest reason for the CTO PCI failure. It is around 86 percent of the cases. And to uh, increase success rate and the perform this procedure in a safe fashion with good long term outcome, you have to have dedicated CTO program and CTO center of excellence with uh, regular webinars with the help of proctors and the 
uh, experts, you can build a good CTO center of excellence and that is key to success for the CTO PCA. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Swaroop, for uh, giving a good summary of uh, the discussions which we had uh, last month and uh, this month. Uh, can we have Dr. Suda also on the screen, please? Yeah. So, uh, there is uh, one, uh, a few couple of uh, questions, uh, Dr. Suda. One is, uh, uh, do you use uh, IBUS or some form of imaging in 100% of the cases or uh, uh, there are some cases where uh, you can get away without uh, imaging. Yes. So, the, the Japan is a very um, lucky country. So, the IBUS was already covered with uh, insurance. So, so, but in, in many cases, uh, it's not need for the IBUS uh, during the CTO PCI. However, that uh, I was guided entry. I mean that uh, CTO was located in at the uh, side branch of Oscar. So I was can clearly uh, visualize the uh, entries of CTO with the IVAS. So in that case, that uh, I was guided uh, guide wiring into the entry. Is very useful in kind of the such situation. So, uh, what the, I saw, I saw that the previous case. So, I was guided wiring is the final option for the CTO. So, I think that I was is very very important to perform CTO to reduce the complication. Yeah, uh, thanks, Dr. Suda. One more uh, question is, uh, when you have an important side branch and it appears as if you have to go by a dissection re-entry uh, technique, uh, is there any uh, tips or tricks of uh, how to save that uh, side branch or you never use the dissection re-entry technique at all? Yeah, yeah, but uh, I, I, I don't like uh, ADR. Because uh, the su success rate was only the seventy percent, maybe uh, it's a very limited situation, like a distal side branch or the distal landing zone is very good. So ADR is only applied for this very good CTO. So I don't like the, but, but uh, it's a very a uh, useful uh, to the. A particular situation, but uh, generally speaking, the retrograde approach is the most important technique to make up the high rate of the success rate uh, in the CTO. Maybe that uh, in Japan, uh, including uh, including me, in my case that. Uh, Maybe ninety three percent was uh, over ninety three percent was uh, success uh, the CTO. So that uh, maybe the ADR uh, only uh, improved uh, only few percent of the success rate, but the retrograde approach uh, improved a much much higher percentage of the success rate. So retrograde is very, very, very important, I think. How often do you actually uh, end up using a rotablation in uh, CTO patients once you actually cross your wire and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the most... Uh, uh, First thing is uh, slow flow during the uh, road operation in the CTO PCA. So, in this kind of situation, so I separate the uh, second session. So, I mean, the as a first session, the uh, recanalize the uh, CTO by only balloon. If the undilated uh, region was uh, observed, the after that, the, uh, one month or two months later, 
the load operation was performed, will probably be performed in this, in that kind of situation. So, so, but, uh, I don't like the load operator, uh, during the CTO. If the, if needed, the 1.25 or uh, maximum, the 1.5 is better to reduce the slow follow or no reflow phenomenon. Yeah, there's one uh, question from uh, Dr. Swaroop. Uh, he wants to know uh, which wire would you prefer in uh, retrograde wire escalation? Sorry, uh, I can't hear. Yeah, the retrograde uh, wire escalation when you're using, uh, which is your preferred wire? Uh, retrograde wire escalation. After the passing the collateral channel. Yes. Yes. So it depends on the uh, situation and uh, it depends on the case. So uh, it's difficult to uh, speak generally talking. So, but uh, in my in my experience, the first step is a polymer jacket intermediate guide wire, like a Pilot 50 or Pilot 150, or in Japan, the Gradius uh, is also available. It's uh, it has a composite core, uh, so I like the polymer jacket and the intermediate guide wire uh, as a fast guide wire from the retrograde. But uh, it depends on the uh, situation. So if the integrated guide wire, integrated system was almost uh, passing the CTO. But finally, the integrated guide wire uh, going to the uh, uh, summit mass space so that the uh, target region is very short. So I, I will use the uh, Gaia from the retro. Gaia second or Gaia third as a first guide wire. But the uh, CTO is long, so Gaia never applied in this kind of situation. So the polymer jacket uh, or UB3 or Miracle Neo3 or Miracle3 is uh, preferable in this kind of situation to, to prevent not not to go to outside the basin. I mean, not to uh, perform, not to induce perforation, guide wire perforation. So the, if the after the retrograde, was succeeded, the success rate was already 90%. So the operator must care about the, uh, much, much care about the population. So that uh, not to, uh, I don't like the high penetration power guide wire in that kind of situation. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Soda, so much. And uh, I'm sure uh, we'll uh, have few workshops with you whenever you come over to India. And uh, it was wonderful having you here. And uh, thank you for uh, staying back so late. I think it's around 7.30, 8 o'clock in Japan. And uh, very kind of you and nice of you to actually uh, spend uh, more than an hour with us. And uh, I'm sure. Uh, the audience and all of us, uh, we have learned uh, significantly from many of the tips and tricks and the approach which uh, you have taught us today. And uh, on that note, uh, we would like to uh, thank you from uh, the entire department of uh, cardiology from AIG hospitals and uh, hope to meet you soon and uh, we'll keep in touch. Uh, with that, uh, we'll uh, close the session for today and uh, thanks everyone again for participating and asking questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.